So Metroidvanias are all about locks and keys. Whether it be a new mechanic, a weapon, or a literal key, that's one of the key parts of a Metroidvania. So to show how that works, I created this level that has some obstacles that you can't get through without first picking up the required item to do it. So for this example, I have a platformer character and I've installed the extension Advanced Jump. That extension gives you a bunch of different behaviors that you can add to your platformer character to give them different movement mechanics. And I've given them all to the character, but we're going to focus on double jumps, dashing, and diving. So we'll go to the event sheet, and you'll see that the first obstacle requires a second jump. So when the player is in collision with the jump object, delete that object, and change the number of times the player can jump in midair by using the expression for player jumps, which you just find with the expression builder and then plus one. So because I could jump once before, now I can jump twice. And then you can do it again or however many times you want to and give your character a double, triple, or quadruple jump. But then we run into an obstacle that we can't get over. So instead we're going to try to break through the wooden blocks below them. And for that, in this example, when the player runs into the dive object, delete the dive object and set the boolean value of the scene variable for diving to true. If I go to the scene variables, you can see what's happening here. I have a boolean scene variable set up for both the dash ability and the dive ability, and I've set them both to false. So when you run into that object, it sets that boolean to true. And then up here in the controls, for diving, we have it set up so that when we press the shift key and the boolean variable is true, then we're able to make the player dive, as long as the S key is pressed to go down and the player is not on the floor. And then back down here with the upgrades, I have it set up so that when the player is diving, we cast a ray from the player object down 20 pixels to check for the wood platform object. And if it's there while you're diving, it shakes the object and starts an opacity tween, which if we open it up you can see is set to delete the object once it's done. And then you can fall and move on to the next one. And then this last object is for the dash. When we collide with it, we delete it and set the dash variable to true. Which again in the controls is set up so that when we press the shift key, while pressing either A or D, and that dash variable is set to true, then we can dash. But then next are doors to get through, which is one way to do the lock and key mechanic for a metroidvania. If we open up the scene variables again, you'll see that I have one set for fire and key to get us through the key block and the ice block. So just like before, players in collision with object, delete the object, set the boolean variable key to true, so the game knows you have the key, and then we'll use this condition to check if a point is inside of the key block. And this point is one that I set up in the player object. So we check if the point is in collision with the lock block. And if the boolean variable is true, then we change its opacity to 100 so we can see through it. And deactivate its platform behavior so it's no longer an obstacle for the platformer character. Next, under this wood platform, we have a fire object, which is obviously used to melt the ice block. So again, collision with object, delete object, set the boolean variable fire to true. Then we check to see if that point is inside the ice block, and if the tween melt exists, because that's the one that's being used in the tween to get rid of the door. And then check if the boolean variable is true to activate the tween, which will change the height of the ice block to zero, so it looks like it's melting. I will suggest that if you're making something as big as a metroidvania in gdevelop, that you use a tile map object, because it's much better for performance, and once you get it going, it's easier to set up. Now a lot of Metroidvanias have melee combat, so if you'd like to learn something about that, check out this video.